Hi everyone, it's Will here. I'm the guy who's normally behind the camera. Um, just thought I'd come on and introduce myself before Dad gets started. Um, just want to thank you very much for all your support over the last six months or so. Um, and also, if you've got any uh, comments for what you'd like to see in future videos, leave that suggestion in the comments section below and um, we might pick it for a future video. Um, also, if you'd like to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button, that would be appreciated as more people will be able to find our content and it will motivate us to continue doing what we're doing. So, over to you, Dad. What a natural that was. So thanks for that, Wills. Um, today, what we thought we would do, and it's William's idea, is really just go over making a live, pretty much live, hook bait mix by using these, which only came out recently, these dedicated sieved and um, prepared hook bait mixes, which you can make paste, pop-ups, wafters, whatever you want with. So we've done all the work, made it ready to go. We'll also be using the pick and mix flavors. In this particular case, I can't help myself. I've got to do alisalar and plum with the new size 250 grams of shrimp extract. I'll just speak for a minute about uh, this shrimp extract, which took quite some time to locate. It comes from the Far East. It's a hydrolyzed shrimp protein, and it's a byproduct of the shrimp farming industry. Most of the shrimps that you see and the prawns that you see on the shelves in the supermarket come from the Far East, not China. Um, and uh, they come from places like Vietnam, Malaysia. And they are in sort of stock ponds. They're fed all sorts of various specialist pellets. And obviously when they've peeled them and presented them beautifully in their packs and sent them over, all the bits that are left go into a big grinding machine and they're mixed with enzymes and they're hydrolyzed, which produces a, a slurry, this thick pink slurry, which has some salt added to, and it's actually used in the aquaculture industry. And I was the first person to bring this into the UK. In fact, I think we're the only people to bring it into the UK in conjunction with a, a wholesaler pal of mine who had the DEFRA license. So I will mention about that because we were originally selling it as we still do in 500 gram large containers. So you can use it for, you know, glugs or dips if you wish. But these smaller ones are better for people that don't want to spend quite so much money. And then you can uh, buy another one when you use that one up. So I'm going to kick off as well, just before I crack the egg into the bowl, um, by telling you about something that uh, William and I have worked on very, very hard over the last few days. In fact, it's taken absolutely ages. I'm not too sure if you can see this clearly, but I'm going to hold it up to the camera. This is a document that can be downloaded from the website as a PDF document, or you can view it on the website. And it's a meticulously careful detail of all the dose rates of all the flavors that I make and sell categorized in free offerings mixes and hook bait mixes, as opposed to six eggs for freebies, you can use them as hook baits too, and one egg mixes for hook baits. So all the dose rates and a guide is on this sheet of paper. No one has ever done this before. And I just suddenly sat there and thought, I'm getting so many emails from people saying, what recipe to use, how much flavor in this mix, that mix, the other mix. So I thought, well, if I do this, it's a guide. But I would also add, the, the flexibility that you can have by being in complete control of making your own mix at home, even if it's what we are going to do today, which is just a small mix, a one egg mix for hook baits. And as the season progresses and you've trialed some of your hook bait mixes and had some good results, which are already coming in, some fantastic results using these recipes that uh, we between us have uh, thought out, and I work individually with people who email me and contact me and ask about advice. So once you've established that, you can then use, as the season progresses, uh, larger quantities of bait for a campaign on a specific water. And your confidence is going to be through the roof because you know it works because you've used it in these small amounts to begin with. 
So I'm going to crack on straight away and crack no on. No pun intended. Um, Williams just said no pun intended. Crack on straight away. Okay. One large egg in the bowl. Make sure all the, uh, the white goes in. And put the glasses on. Plum, pick and mix. Syringe already. In it goes. So how much? I'm doing a one egg mix. I'm going to put in one fifth of one mil. That's 0.2 of one mil. And that is on this sheet too. So that's the plum. Alicillar. Different clean syringe. Now, bearing in mind this is a single egg hook bait mix, you can overdose Alicillar. And I'm going to put a whole one mil of that daring. As Bob Ross would say, the guy that does the painting, it lives in there, that Alicillar. It's a happy flavour. <laughs> William's cringing at me saying that. <laughs> and the shrimp. Don't put this on your cornflakes, by the way. It does smell. But it's different to all the other fish hydrolysates and uh, seafood hydrolysates that are out there. And I like to be different. So here we go. Half a teaspoon, about 2.5 mil in these little plastic measuring spoons. Clean that off. So it's ready to go. This is a wonderfully familiar smell. And you know, I believe the, the, um, the interaction of these flavour blends, which have proven themselves time and time again, I think there's a little bit more to this than meets the eye with regards to why carp like it. I'm quite convinced that the diet that they've had over millions of years of their evolution, their genetic evolution, is that they have different fruits and berries that fall in the water and they eat them. So they actually recognise some of the aroma chemicals that are present in natural fruits. And so you think, well, why do they like plum flavour? Why do they like strawberry flavour, peach flavour, whatever it's going to be? And I think they're genetically programmed to like them because fruits appear in their diet. For example, chub will eat elderberries that fall off the trees and they'll certainly eat plum um, because I've caught chub that have regurgitated whole plums that they've crushed up in their throat teeth. That's an amazing piece of information which I haven't mentioned before uh, on a clip, but it's true. Why do they eat the fruit? Because they must derive some benefit from it, just like the birds will eat the fruit off the trees in the garden. So, quick bit of interaction there on why I think flavours are sometimes successful, even if they're fruity. So, as I've said before, the eggs have acted as a mild emulsifier and they've dissipated that oil-based alicillar flavour as an emulsion. We're ready to go with the base mix. I'm going to make both sinking baits and pop-ups from this same mix because this is what I would do for an actual session. Here's the, uh, the hook bait mix bag. Just cut the top off here. And when I've added this in, people ask me how much to use. We'll weigh the bag after I've made this and we'll see how much powder is left from a 400 gram bag. And that will give us a rough idea of how much we've used to do our hook bait mix. So I'm mixing this around with a fork and you can see it's beginning to come together. 
Bio shellfish has hydrolyzed fish protein, CPSP90, LT94. It has five different types of cereals in, some of which are micronized, which means they're toasted. It's got full fat soy flour and soy isolate, milk powders and milk proteins, vitamin and mineral supplements. There's a whole host of things going on in here, uh, including whey protein and egg albumin to help it bind together. Uh, this is a mix I designed back in 93. I've never changed the recipe and it's a guaranteed cashew wherever you go. That sounds like a big statement, but it's true. And that's why I'm doing this mix again, this specific recipe again on this clip. So it's coming together and before I put my hands in there and make them very smelly, I'm going to put these uh, gloves on. It's been quite difficult to get hold of these uh, blue gloves over the last uh, lockdown period because obviously they're medical and dental gloves. But uh, some of these flavours and additives, they do make your fingers stink, so quite useful to use them. Okay, so this is going to need a bit more powder. And you can see how nicely through this transparent plastic bowl the mix has come together. And this is exactly what you guys would be doing at home. That is absolutely coming together now as a, a perfect holding paste. Bit difficult to describe the type of consistency you can see that it's holding together without sticking too much to my hands a good trick to do is to just put a little bit of powder on your hands whether you've got gloves on or not and i think for the purposes of this clip and because it gives you a slightly better feel for the texture of the bait particularly when you're using cork balls, which I'll, I'll make a few pop-ups on this clip too. I'll take the gloves off. The mix will be more manageable without gloves because I can feel the, the paste texture very much better. So I would say that that's done. I'll put that there. <coughs> take the gloves off. The gloves are off now. And I think what I'll do is I'll kick off and just make a few pop-ups to begin with. And I'm not using any sophisticated bits of kit for this. Just two or three mil round a 10 mil cork ball. I think these are 10 mil, yes, 10 mil cork ball. Quick as that. You can see in the sunlight coming through the window not too much paste around. And if you want to make wafters using cork balls, I'll tell you a little trick that you can do. You can put a little bit of extra paste around the cork ball. And when you go fishing, obviously that paste has made the cork ball act so that the boilie sinks very slightly. So it's, it's too heavy. And if you get a craft knife or uh, one of those modelling knives or a standing knife blade, you can gradually, ever so carefully, like an apple peel, peel off a little bit of the skin of the outside until it becomes a wafter. That also releases some of the smell from inside the, the hook bait. So you can make a wafter by uh, 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 using that technique. If it's something that you have never tried before, it's worth it. And it's something you can do like as an emergency too, sometimes. You can uh, knock, up, uh, knock up this on the bank. Doesn't take long. So if I was to imagine that this was going to be for a session, there's a clock here ticking away. 
And whilst we will have a stop when I boil the water, you can see that it isn't really going to take long for me to make a few pop-ups. Here they go, it's happening very quick. A few pop-ups and a few sinkers, which is enough for a 24 hour session, say. And once again, you can see not too much paste around. And I'm letting these, I'm doing the pop-ups first because we'll let these stand. What I tend to do is just before I boil pop-ups is I'll give them another gentle roll again between my fingers, or between my hands, just to make sure they're nice and firm and round. And with your bare hands, you can get the touch and feel of it. Nice and shiny pop up, ready to go. I'm just gonna do one more. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight pop ups will do. Eight pop ups, eight carp. We hope. There we go, that's number eight. So that's taken, you know, probably five minutes. I haven't checked the clock. Now it comes to making some sinkers. I'll just push this over to one side. So I'm gonna break it up into, say, three pieces. So I've made eight, eight pop-ups, cork ball pop-ups. This is a one egg mix. And I've made this into three little balls. I'm just rolling this out. Again, this is all by hand. There's one little snake ready to go. So again, no machinery. Two. Three. You can probably see these quite clearly on here. I'm going to roll these into sinkers. Again, the whole benefit of making your bait at home is that you can make whatever size you want to suit the conditions that you're fishing in. So if you're fishing a small estate lake, three, four, five acre estate lake, you could just use chop ups or round boilers. And you don't need perfectly round boilers every time because you can use a catapult and get these 40 or 50 yards with ease. So, because I've done this over a few years, what I tend to do is I roll two at a time. So there's two pieces here, two at a time. That's how quick and easy it is. Two pieces, two at a time. Some of them are a bit smaller than others. That's good, because if you're using different size baits, the fish are varying their suction when they're coming over those baits, which helps them to, uh, well, it confuses them more when it comes to picking up your hook bait because you're not using a, a bed of bait which are exactly all of uniform size. So the fish are using more suction on one free offering and less suction on another. When they come across your hook bait, they're more likely to take it back into their mouth. So this two at a time thing, really means you can get through a one egg mix super fast. I'm going to estimate that we're going to take, we'll check the clock, it's just coming up to uh, 22.11. So we'll switch the camera off now. I'll just finish rolling these. We'll put the water on to boil and I'll see you in a second. Hi everybody, you can see the clock's coming round here. I've put the boilies in a wire tray and the water is boiling with the window open just for purposes of boiling here. So when the second hand gets to the bottom here at six, I'm going to drop these in. Okay, so the water's staying on the boil and I'm going to leave these in here just agitating a little bit. Bearing in mind that I've used a hook bait mix, so these are going to need a shorter boil. 
because they've got extra egg albumin and whey protein in to make them harder. And I've decided to use the whole hook bait mix for a session or not, as the case may be. These can be frozen and used later. Um, I mean, you don't really need to, to use these as, um, as free offerings because they're a bit too strong. But certainly it will be a batch that you could freeze down in little batches afterwards. So we're coming up now to nearly a minute. And my recommendation would be for roughly this size of boiler, about 16 mil, maybe up to 18 mil max, you need to be boiling for about a minute and 10 seconds and so that's what we'll do. I've still got my eight pop-ups here. So out they come from the mix. Onto the tray. Here's my eight pop-ups. They're gonna go in and boil away. And this lovely uh, pinky wine color, this red color, is the Robin Red that's in the, uh, in the mix the original Robin Red I might add, not a copy, the actual one that comes from Hayes, it's the best one. I'm not sponsored by them by the way. So these are boiling away quite well and um, we'll put this, just make a, a bit of a clearance on this desk because I want to speak in a second about baiting up at this time of year different water temperatures and oxygen levels. We're just coming up now to a time when I'm going to take the pop-ups out. They've had a minute now, five o'clock. I'm not going to give them too much longer. And we'll get this uh, gas ring switched off. We'll give them a minute and 15 seconds. Peace reigns. There we go. I'll just leave those uh, to dry off there. People have been asking me, by the way, about this um, bullfinch burner. And that's what it's called. It's called a bullfinch burner. You can buy them online. Take the hot water off there. There it is, you can, uh, you can see it quite clearly. You need the uh, red gas bottles, the propane gas bottles. And um, these, are, I think, are about £170. That might seem a lot of money. I've had this particular one probably best part of 25 years. It's a commercial boiler and, um, or gas ring, and, and it will last a long time. So it's worth the investment. I'll just put this uh, away to one side, some of this hot water. Okay, so, so just whilst we finish off, I want to speak about um, baiting up oxygen levels at this time of year and water temperatures. This is really important because um, most of the dissolved oxygen is in the upper layers of the water, in the top six feet of water. So if you can, this time of year, you need to be fishing the oxygenated areas of the water and you need to be fishing the areas of the water which are the warmest. So certainly if you can find three or four feet of water, not only will it have a good oxygen saturation, but it will have um, a, a perfect water temperature because that's the upper layers are gonna warm up in the sunshine. And you'll see the fish moving in the shallows, close to marginal reed beds, that sort of thing. So I do recommend that if you're stumped or you're not too sure uh, which areas of a lake to fish, find the shallows and you will invariably find the fish early part of the season. The same applies most times throughout the year. When you get to extreme conditions and it's very hot, the fish are still very often in the shallower water. So try and avoid very deep water because you will find there is often a variance in temperature of up to 10 degrees in 10 feet of water. It, it's that um, extreme. So in the upper layers 
of a, a section of gravel pit or lake bed that's say 10 to 12 feet deep, the top two feet of water on a sunny week will be maybe 18, 19, 20 or 21 degrees Celsius. And when you get your temperature gauge and put it down on the bottom of the lake, it could be as cold as 10 degrees. That's a massive difference. So carp will want to go where they feel more comfortable and where they, where they can metabolize and feel happy. <laughs> and they're gonna feel happier in the warmer water. So choose shallow water. And that's my sort of final tip on this clip. I think I've just about covered everything other than one last thing. What we said was that we would weigh what was left of a 400 gram bag, which would then tell us how much that one egg mix used in terms of powder. And we used bio shellfish. This mix for one large egg used up 130 grams of powder for the hook bait mix when we did those um, hard hook baits and the eight pop-ups. So that'll give you an idea of just how much bait you can make just from 400 grams, just with your two hands at home, take that control, go fishing and catch a few fish. Thanks for all your support. Don't forget to fill in the comments box at the bottom. I know William mentioned that earlier on, but that's really important. And do ask us any questions that you would like answered. I can't guarantee we'll answer them all, but your feedback motivates us to do more of these clips. So see you soon. Next time. Thanks.